cutting parts. Parts like our steel members will be cut from nested material specifically purchased for the job. Most parts that are cut and created will be welded onto beams, columns, and supports alike. They could be base plates, top plates, connection plates, clips, and more. Pausing you here real quick and then you can continue to watch. The Worker Efficiency app is in the Apple and Android store right now. It has 140 videos that spans OSHA courses, how to read drawings, and more. Try it free for 30 days. You can go watch everything in that time period if you really wanted to. Now, if you are a freelancer, trade worker, etc., the Worker Efficiency app helps with time tracking on jobs, manages certificates, and more. If you are a business owner, the app helps you create a pipeline of skilled workers with upskilling abilities, data and profitability tracking, and the ability to curate your own training libraries. Find out more at workerefficiency.com. Download the app for free for 30 days and or ping us if you want to chat more. Thanks again for watching. We will let you go and get back to it and enjoy the rest of the video. Parts could also go into creating the various embeds needed for a job. So they're not always just for assemblies. Your part sheets and assembly sheets will give you the full picture of how parts will be used and will be the instructions for further parts processing. Large steel plates, flat bar, angles, etc., are purchased for the purpose of creating our parts from them. This steel can be cut using a plasma table, CNC machine, iron worker, which is a machine, not an iron worker, shears, punch, saws, and more. It really comes down to your shop's capabilities. Our parts processing will follow the same steps as our members did when it comes to steel material being pulled from staging. A pick ticket and cut list will be issued and it's asking us to pull two plates that are 3 8 inches wide and 4 feet by 8 feet long. These are sheets of steel. You will find the stored material and check that the information is marked correctly on the material as it is on the ticket. Remember, our ticket will reference the material length, heat number, job number, and the quantity of the steel needed to be pulled. You will physically measure the material for accuracy according to the markings and the ticket. You will check quantity if applicable, and once confirmed, you will bring in the material safely using a forklift, crane, or other safe methods. The method we are going to cut this steel is via a plasma table. Not every shop is going to have this machinery, but there are other ways to cut the part that we are about to describe later on. Our cut list indicates that we need to cut plate that is four inches wide by one foot, six and a half inches long. And then we need to cut 112 pieces. That's a lot of pieces. You need to remember steel is purchased and nested per the job. This part in particular will be used in 39 different assemblies. So again, you can see how that nesting step for material is important to maximize the efficiency in the shop and the ultimate construction of a job. This is the part sheet for what we will ultimately be cutting and processing. This is where our plasma table will cheat a little bit because not only will it cut the part, but it will cut the holes as well. However, let's not get sidetracked by that just yet. Remember that beam we just cut and processed? Well, this is a part that is going to be cut and bolted to that beam assembly. All right, we have our plate that is 3 8 inches wide by 4 and 8 feet long. We have our steel sheet on the plasma table and we are ready to cut. With plasma tables or CNC machines, you won't need to measure 112 pieces on that sheet of steel. However, you will need to input your data and files properly in the machine. Before starting a plasma table or CNC machine, just as the rule for measure twice and cut once applies to manual cuts, the rule for check your data input twice and then cut once. Look at the machine's dimensions that have been input and then reference the cut list in the part sheet. If they match, we are bueno. When cutting this many parts, it's always good practice to do one test run for one part. So you can pull the part and check its physical dimensions to your drawings as a third check and balance, which our plate needs to be four inches wide by one foot by six and a half inches long. Now that everything is squared away, we are good to cut. Another tip is that you don't press start for 112 parts. You should do them in batches to ensure that parts continually cut correctly by checking and physically measuring. Work in tens or 25s. Stopping in increments to spot check will ensure accuracy across the board for all your parts. All right, now I'm sure that there are those of you who are out there that are saying, well, we're not that fancy in having a plasma table at our disposal. That is fine. There are plenty of ways to go about tackling 112 pieces of this size. Instead of using a large 3 8 inch sheet plate to cut everything from, you would probably order long 3 8 inch by 4 inch wide flat bar. Using a shear or iron worker, you would cut all your plate to length one and six and a half inches long. Some iron workers or shears have this backrest that you can adjust to the plate length, and every time you push the plate against the steel backrest, it cuts it. This is where the principle of measure twice, cut once comes into play again. Okay, everything is cut. 
Just like we did with our beam member, we need to post cut mark everything for traceability afterwards. On the first plate, for example, you will mark part dimensions, the job number, the ship mark, which the ship mark for this is P65, and the heat number. Parts coming off the plasma table, CNC machine, or shears typically need a quick pass to deburr the material. A burr is a raised edged or a small piece of material that remains on a workpiece after a modification process like cutting. It is usually an unwanted piece of material and is removed with a quick pass of a sanding wheel or by a grinder. It is that simple. Once our material is cut, we are ready to move on to the next stage of the fabrication process. Again, parts can receive all sorts of different treatment. Any part that needs holes, bevel prep, or bending should be organized out, while parts that are simple and complete as cut should be sent to layout and fit up and staging. That is cutting parts. Again, thanks for watching. Go download the app and try it for free for 30 days. The app has so many capabilities for those in construction, manufacturing, service, and agencies at scale. Build a pipeline of skilled workers, build growth roadmaps, track skills and certifications, track estimated and actual time. There's so much in here. If you want more videos just like this, they are all there in the app in the library. You can even broadcast your own training to your teams if you want to, all there in the app as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.